for, for much of the fall and into this first start of the year, to the start of this year, uh, equities were moving up with high anticipation that there were going to be multiple, lots of rate cuts uh, coming in 2024. That seems to be less the case now. So my question is, what are you looking for in terms of the number and magnitude of rate cuts in 2024? And will the fact that there are likely to be fewer rate cuts be uh, deleterious to equities? Yes, yeah, so I think in terms of our expectations, I mean, we're similar to Kathy. We're not quite abandoning three cuts, but we think certainly the risks are more skewed towards fewer cuts than more at this point. And we think it's really that we've made no progress on that second stage of disinflation. <clears throat> the first part was really about supply chains healing, energy prices coming down, commodity prices writ large, profit margins coming down as well. But we just haven't made any progress on that second stage, which is shelter finally coming in as we expect and core services coming back to a level that's consistent with, with what the Fed thinks. And I think the big problem for the kind of the panoply of data today is really that we had retail sales data that came in quite weak. And so if it's the story about strong demand that we'd had year to date alongside slightly elevated inflation, that's still a pretty benign backdrop. But if you kind of shift back towards that more stagflation. So can stocks yeah. keep moving up if inflation and interest rates aren't moving down dramatically? I think it's going to be more difficult here, given the run-up that we've had and kind of that a lot of equity markets seem pretty fully valued by our take at this point. Let me ask the same question to you, Steve. How dependent are, <clears throat> do you think, from an economic standpoint, are, are the equity markets uh, to, to a decline in inflation and a decline in interest rates? You know, until today, they haven't been. I don't know if in the back they can get together the January 25 Fed funds contract. What you'll see is that's the mark that I use to figure out where they think the Fed's going to be at the end of the year. Um, and that number has been uh, creeping up at the same time. And that's been for most of January and February. At the same time, what's happened to the st stocks over that time? They've gone up as well. So there's a real question. I think there's the Fed funds target rate. There's a real question, uh, Tyler, as to the extent to which the market cares that much about those rate cuts coming as long as earnings are happening. Mm -hmm. And my mm -hmm. understanding is that the earnings forecasts have gone up over time, which essentially makes stocks less expensive. So I, in the first order, always keep my eye on earnings before I even look at the Fed. Of course, Fed's going to take drastic action. and ends up mattering more for the market than the earnings does. But that's not where we're at right now. We're, we're having an argument over one, two, or three cuts and when they may happen. 75, 50 base points. going to matter a lot to some companies, not a whole lot to, to, to a bunch of others. I think the key here that I'm really interested in is what's happening with profit margins. This chart, this, this, this data today in the PPI suggests profit margins are in fact coming down, which is good news for the inflation numbers. And I don't know how, the extent to which that translates into the earnings that are reported by companies in the months ahead.